Okay, good morning from, oh, good morning, good afternoon from here in the UK. Good morning, good evening to everybody in other parts of the world. Thank you for joining us on this latest Basis Technologies webinar and our ongoing series of webinars about DevOps and test automation from SAP. As you can see on the screen, today we're here to talk about how we can solve three of the biggest SAP testing challenges through a technology called robotic test automation, which is a really unique way of approaching regression test automation in SAP. I'm going to get into the details of that in a little while. Um, before we get started, there's always a bit of uh, admin to these webinars. You will all see that uh, everybody on the call today is on mute. So uh, you won't be able to contribute verbally to the discussion, but you should see a questions box in the GoToMeeting control panel. And we would encourage you to enter any questions that you may have throughout the webinar into there and we'll get to as many of those as we can at the end of the session. We're going to aim to run for about 40, 45 minutes today. Um, uh, so we'll see how we go for time in terms of Q&A. We are recording today's session, as we always do. So a link will be sent to all registrants at the end of the webinar. So if you want to get that to review the session again or pass on to anyone else and you don't see that link, uh, do by all means get in touch with us. You can do that via our website and there'll be some contact details at the end of the session here today. So without further ado, let's uh, let's move on to, to uh, a couple of introductions of um, who our presenters are today. So uh, my name is PT Absley. I'm the head of product marketing here at Basis Technologies um, based in London in the UK, as I've mentioned. Um, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Erin Krieghauser, who's uh, one of our senior technologist and one of our team that operates out of our Dallas office in the USA. Erin, um, thanks for joining us. Welcome. Um, why don't you give uh, everybody a quick introduction to your background in the world of testing and SAP? Sure. Yeah, thanks, Pete. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. Uh, again, uh, broadcasting here out of uh, uh, beautiful uh, Dallas, Texas. It's a sunny day. Um, and uh, it's my background. I've been in software development for uh, you know over 20 years, and primarily focus on the Java C# -sharp space. Uh, so uh, very used to continuous integration, continuous deployments, um, and a full DevOps story in that way. And uh, before joining uh, Base Technologies, I was a development manager for a UI automation company focused on the SAP space called WorkSoft, uh, and uh, I was the head of their certified product. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Um, so, uh, people who've joined Basis, webinar, Basis Technologies webinars before will have heard my voice um, and, uh, and have heard the format of these. Um, today, we're going to have a bit of a, a more of a conversational style where we talk about some of these challenges um, uh, on the agenda here. So, as I say, we're going to look at some of the, the biggest testing challenges and how robotic test automation can help to address those. And we're also going to look a little bit at how how it can support DevOps through this concept of shifting left and some of the benefits we get from that. Um, we were hoping and um, planning to uh, actually uh, be on video here in the spirit of um, distance, distance working and uh, the, the new ways we're all working today. But unfortunately, the uh, gods of broadband have intervened. So uh, we're, we're unable to do that. And uh, we're actually having to run these slides uh, in a slightly different way than we planned. So. Um, do bear with us if there's the odd uh, click and miss step as we go through, but uh, I'm sure we will manage. So um, yeah, that's uh, quickly that's uh, today's agenda, which you will have seen when you signed up for the webinar. For those of you that maybe aren't so familiar with Basis Technologies or haven't joined our webinars before, um, just want to mention quickly who we are and what we do and why this is a, a relevant topic that, that we're presenting and talking about today. So. At a very high level, Basis Technologies as a company creates software automation that changes the way our cost customers are able to run and manage their SAP systems. And what that is really all about is bringing concepts like DevOps and continuous delivery and today automated regression testing um, into those SAP environments and working in a much more efficient and automated way than perhaps has been the traditional SAP approach. So we have the most complete DevOps and test automation platform that is specifically engineered for SAP. And that's the, the really important bit for us as a company. We've got a team around the world, as it says on the screen here, in global offices in the US, Australia, Europe, and the headquarters in the UK, with many, many decades, um, probably hundreds of years in total of experience in the world of SAP and SAP technology. And that's what we really focus on 
solving for. So all of our solutions are certified <clears throat> on both NetWeaver and S4. Um, and you can see on the screen some of the, the companies and the brands we work with across the world, some really complex, large SAP estates, but also some much more simple implementations that are still seeing the benefit from using SAP automation. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things, as I said, that we focus on is regression testing and regression test automation. And that's really what we're here to talk about today. Um, but just before we start, you know, Aaron, let's set the scene. Uh, I'm sure many people on the call will, will have their own opinion on this, but why is testing, particularly of applications like SAP, such an important topic um, in many organizations? Well, simply put, our production systems cannot go down. If they do, it's very costly to the business. Uh, not only you know, can you not take orders and uh, you know, deliver products to your customers, uh, but as well as there's, a, there's a, a cost to the brand overall. And in today's climate, you know, supply chains are actually critical. Um, and uh, so therefore we wanna essentially make sure that any changes we're making in our production system are fully tested for not only the new functionality, but more importantly, make, don't break the existing functionality from a regression testing standpoint. And I mean, you know, we've got some figures on the, the screen here, but clearly, especially in, uh, in an environment like we've got today and, and the world as it is at the moment, you know, there are more consequences to breaking those production systems than just cash. You know, we've got to think about things like, like reputation and uh, just operational business consequences, correct? Yeah, that's right. Because, you know, our customers, uh, you know, really uh, rely upon our, the products and services that we deliver. Um, and uh, and we, we really can't afford to go uh, be offline because of a, a failed testing uh, of a change that's going into production. OK, so, I mean, clearly, you know, it, it's, it's almost self-evident that testing is going to be one of the factors that's going to help us to avoid that downtime and avoid the kind of consequences that we've got on the screen there. But obviously, it's a very broad term, software testing, lots of elements to that, um, lots of moving parts in the machine. Uh, as I've already mentioned, we're going to really focus on one part of that in today's webinar. It's an important part, but one aspect. So can you just talk to us a bit about how regression testing specifically is different from other parts of the testing process and why that's so important in a system like SAP? Well, yeah, so you know, there's really, there's regression testing, which is essentially making sure that the way your business processes work today will continue to work after you make that change in production, um, which is different than what I call progressive testing, which is uh, testing the new functionality, the new changes that are coming across. Uh, and uh, both approaches uh, are done differently. And, uh, and honestly, I, I think that the testing the new changes is easier to do because it's top of mind. It's what we've been talking about um, for you know, maybe the past couple of weeks or months if it's a bigger change um, and to do that kind of testing. But the regression testing is, is what's below that water line, the famous uh, iceberg image we have shown up here. It's, it's all the functionality that we, we know we, how it works today in our business processes, um, but there's probably lots of functionality that we just totally forgot about that no one single person knows about how it all works. Um, and so therefore, it's much bigger problem to tackle from making sure that you have coverage of, you know, make sure you test the business processes in terms of all the different ways that they work today. And again, coming back to that slide we just talked about, this is, this is what's actually making your business run, right? This is the the operational stuff that, that the business functions on. So we actually do really need to have it front of mind as well. And maybe we don't always do that. Uh, that's right. And a lot of times I talk to customers and uh, they'll say they have regression testing, um, but uh, you know, in truth be told, uh, they say, yeah, there's a large part of it uh, that, you know, we just don't get around the testing because we ran out of time um, or we didn't have uh, adequate documentation and lots of other problems. So essentially they go live with uh, changes in the production, uh, crossing their fingers and hoping that it doesn't break things. Yeah, I've certainly heard uh, organizations we've spoken to talking about flying by the seat of their pants in certain areas because they're not able to, to focus on regression testing as much as they'd like. So um, let's just move on and very quickly um, take a look at a, almost a little tease for, for what we're gonna talk about later. So. Uh, robotic test automation, I've already mentioned, is, is part of the topic of today's webinar and quite a bold statement on the screen here in that RTA, as we, we shorten robotic test automation too often, um, lets you turn back time. 
before we get into a bit more detail, could you just give us a flavour of what you mean by that and, and what we're going to uh, cover later on before we start talking about the challenges that, that this can address. Yeah, so, you know, it's about, you know, going grabbing a segment of time and how your business actually worked for that period of time and using that for regression testing. So uh, easy, easy to say, um, I'm sure not quite so easy to to do and uh, a lot of devil in the detail there. So we're going to talk a bit more about the practicalities of that later. But this idea of turning back time is, is quite crucial to how RTA works. So before we get into that, we talked in the title about three of the biggest testing challenges relating to SAP testing in particular. So let's take a closer look at those. I'm just going to introduce the three that we're going to look at that, uh, that you've identified um, we're going to go through today. So we're going to look at coverage um, as the first question in terms of what we're able to test. We're going to look at test scripts and test data um, and how we can test. And then we're going to also talk a bit about the question of scale and how we can actually manage to propagate different kinds of solutions uh, across the business and what some of the challenges might be there. So first of all, let's, let's uh, move on and let's look at coverage as the first, first big challenge when it comes to testing. So I'm sure everybody pretty much knows what we mean when we say test coverage, um, but there are some specific limitations and problems even around understanding what to test. So tell us a bit about this uh, as one of the problem areas in, in, in SAP testing. Yeah, so it's it's a challenge that uh, every QA uh, member faces when they're brought in and and uh, asked to go through and write test scripts in terms of you know of how the business processes actually work. And so they all describe that it, it just takes a lot of time to sit in a room and you go grab functional resources and pull them away from their you know regular day job you know, from the business. And essentially, you maybe get a post of notes on a whiteboard and uh, map out these business processes. Um, and uh, so it just, it takes time to go through and, and, and basically get your arms around what actually to test. You start off from a very, you know, 50,000, 100,000 foot view, and then, you know, realize drilling into the actual details of all the different variations is, uh, is, uh, is all encompassing. And then uh, it's actually pretty intimidating to do that. So then at that point, then they have to kind of prioritize, okay, what are, what are the critical transactions? Let's focus on those first. Um, and then at that point, we'll come back around for these other edge cases. Um, and so it's just, you know, it's a significant time required before you even start working on, on the actual tests. Uh, and then, you know, going beyond the happy path, talk about this, you know, critical business process. Um, how do we then go through and assure that we have all these different variations for, um, you know, the, the way that the business processes flow, the, the negative test cases, if you will. And, and, uh, and all the different types of users and, and different types of customers and different type of pricing and, and all the other business rules that we have. And so basically, you know, going through and being very, you know, encompassing in terms of, you know, having a broad coverage or, you know, deep coverage of the way the business processes actually work. And so, you know, we try to leverage sometimes automation tools to be able to help us do this, but uh, there's a learning curve to those. and. Uh, you know, so they're still too slow and, and, and ultimately they're, they're pretty expensive. Um, and then there's this concept of, you know, okay, we're going to go ahead and have a wide test case, you know, your, your end to end. Um, and so we're going to go from, you know, generating sales order all the way into pick, pack and ship and deliver invoice to the customer. Um, but uh, essentially we end up kind of, you know, having that wide breadth of the end to end process, but it, where's the meat of it? And what's actually we testing underneath of you know, all those different variations and those different edge cases. So it's, it's ended up being pretty shallow, you know. So we find out that a lot of times, 75% of the business processes, uh, you really, you know, uh, that goes on behind the scenes are just not really tested. Um, so therefore, uh, you know, we just need help to be able to go beyond the UI and, uh, uh, you know, test the other things that are actually happening within your SAP system. And I think, you know, it's interesting, I think, here, particularly that happy path area, because I'm sure people are familiar with the, the scope of the task of business process mapping and, and the associated effort there. But um, I guess it's kind of a, if people are familiar with the idea of a black swan, this um, phrase to describe something you couldn't possibly imagine. And, and that links in, I guess, to that idea of the happy path where, you know, you can only document things that you can imagine you can be aware of, but that might not be the totality of 
of what could go wrong. So I guess that's also part of the problem in terms of edge cases and identifying the unexpected. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of times we, we just automate the things that we actually visibly see. What's happening in the user interface, maybe the result of a report, maybe the, the result of a batch job, but there's a lot of technical things that are happening under the hood um, within SAP, you know, making calls to external systems and uh, making sure that, uh, you know, those, uh, the changes we make are not gonna break the way we communicate with external systems. So there's a lot going on there that uh, it's very tough to be able to have regression test coverage for. Okay, so coverage is, a, is clearly a challenge around figuring out what we're gonna test, um, and also those areas that we can't necessarily predict and, and technical things we can't look at. But let's talk, you know, let's talk about the how. And again, this is often as soon as we, we put these words on the screen or we mention them, sometimes people's faces drop when we talk about test scripts. Now, um, obviously a bit of an overlap here with that business process mapping and resource question in terms of how much you can manage. But uh, what's really the big problem with test scripts as a, as a way of approaching testing overall? Well, essentially, we don't have enough time to write every uh, single script that we think we need for every single variation of the business processes. So you're constantly doing a trade-off of risk versus resources. You're constantly accepting, you know, your test plan will uh, will not put the business at risk. You know, did you actually go through and have enough? Are we test only testing their critical transactions? And what is deemed a critical transaction? Um, and so it, it just takes a long time to write the test scripts to be able to get uh, you know, uh, any type of return on investment for your actual work, uh, coverage that you, you have. So and then it kind of leads into, you know, we'll, we'll put it off to tomorrow. We'll, we'll come back and get to it you know, tomorrow. Um, we'll just get the critical transactions uh, written from those test cases. And then at that point, we'll have time later on for the next release. Um, but the problem is, is that there's always more and more demand, new modules. We take on a new company uh, through an acquisition. And, uh, uh, and so therefore we never, it's very difficult to go back and actually go through and add more coverage to something. And so, um, and, so and then it's just really, it just gets to the point where, hey, it's good enough. We do have some coverage, so at least it's better than nothing that we used to have. So, um, and, uh, but the other problem with this whole thing um, that's not really alluded to here is around test data. Um, test data, you know, you got to have to have some type of environments for you to be able to go through and effectively not only play back these test scripts once, but repeatedly. And sometimes, you know, you have to be able to do it on an ad hoc basis. Um, and so what is the level of effort to go through and make sure the test data is lined up for those test scripts to actually run? Yeah, and I guess that's what you're alluding to with the necessary but not sufficient condition there. Uh, when we talk about test scripts, it goes hand in hand with the test data. Um, it's probably worth drilling in just a little bit as well. I know that, that you've talked about test script creation and what a burden that can be, and it can be a huge barrier to entry of any comprehensive testing solution. But, um, but maintenance is also really a problem, I know, for many organizations who, who even do manage to get to a level of coverage they're happy with. Um, how much of, a, of an issue is that for the organizations that you, you deal with and, and talk to? Well, I mean, it, it, it's a big deal, and it, and it kind of gets into the next step a little bit that we're going to talk about, the next challenge around scale. But um, it, it's essentially once you get to a critical mass of the test scripts that you have, um, then once a, the application is testing changes, you've got to go through and triage and update those test scripts. Um, there's also a, a problem in that the resources you have that built those test scripts, are they going to be there two years from now? And if not, then will the new resources you have to maintain those test scripts, will they be able to, A, understand them and know where to go and update those test scripts when your applications do change or when your test data has gone stale um, and broken? And so therefore, there's a, there's a burden of maintenance uh, that you have to manage on an ongoing basis. I mean, I know some of the organizations that we've worked with, we're, we're literally talking thousands, if not maybe tens of thousands of scripts in, in some places. Is, is that correct? Uh, that's right. And uh, it's, it, it's a big problem. And really, the companies have to invest uh, quite a bit of money in a testing center of excellence um, to have a centralized leadership to the various other testing teams and uh, to provide, provide guidance and as well as rules of engagement, if you will, and um, standards. Uh, and so... 
Um, there's a, again, it's, it's, a, it's a big investment um, and uh, companies eventually realize they need to do this um, on their journey towards uh, regression testing. And I think maybe the important thing worth mentioning here before we talk about RTA, uh, robotic test automation, is that um, this challenge doesn't necessarily get easier if you adopt some of the more traditional automation tools um, in that you've still got to create and maintain those test scripts one way or another. Uh, you do. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's basically just moving the problem around. It's not really solving the problem. Um, and uh, so it's... Uh, Again, it's, it's you have maybe a written test cases, and so therefore you have to maintain those. But then if you have test scripts, then you have to have a know how the automation tool works and then be able to know what your library uh, does and where to make changes and do the proper maintenance. And as well as to build in such a way that it is uh, reusable as much as you can. Uh, and so uh, it, it's, it's a burden to basically make sure you have uh, adequate resources for uh, that particular uh, skill set. Okay, so uh, so test scripts. I mean, I'm sure it's not a surprise to anyone uh, what a challenge that can be. But but worth reiterating some of the difficulties there. Let's just talk about scale. Um, obviously, the whole uh, business process mapping, test creation, maintenance, whatever. We've got a resource problem, a resource challenge all the way through this conversation. But there are some specific issues as well which make scaling uh, a good level of testing difficult. Um, Take us through, you know, what we've got on this slide and some of those particulars that can also be uh, be difficult to deal with from the point of view of scale. Yeah, so you know, and when I alluded to earlier in terms of having a testing center of excellence and uh, an investment in, in regression test libraries, yeah, um, it, there is a you know you can get to a certain critical mass, if you will, um, in terms of the amount of coverage you may have, but at some point it is difficult to be able to go and double that amount of coverage that you have. Um, and I was talking to one particular uh, vice president of uh, QA, you know, large manufacturing company, and uh, he said, look, I'm really stuck at having this 25% you know, coverage. Um, and uh, I, I can't simply just you know, double the workforce. I don't have the budget for that, but yet I'm getting pressure to go through and actually double the amount of coverage that I have. Um, so therefore, I'm kind of stuck in this this phase because we're always having to maintain and uh, the test scripts that we have. So it, it's tough to get to, to get out of the step function and break into the next level for them. Um, so they're always looking for ways to get past it. Um, and so essentially, you know, another problem is is that it, you know testing doesn't get any easier as you know the, the, your amount of coverage that you actually your test scripts you actually write. Um, and so uh, one of the problem. Uh, you, once you solve one problem, you know, risk, but it also creates another problem in terms of resources. So um, yeah, script maintenance and test data management just get really harder in that regard. Um, and then another big challenge with this whole scale thing is that you have to actually have to, you know, divert your non-testers away from their actual, uh, you know, day jobs, the functional people. And so yeah, if you go through and do like a large upgrade per se, and you set up a UAT environment into you know, the business. They want to ensure that the, the upgrade is not going to break the way they do you know, business today. So therefore, they have to come in and do this large regression testing and, and get away from the day job um, that actually makes money for the company. And so you know, it's, it's a, this kind of feeling of, oh, no, not this again. Um, and so it's really a non-value add activity for these people. They know it's necessary, but again, it's not really making them money. We're just a preventative behavior. And so, and it just yeah. gets into the management problem then, in terms of you know effective regression testing. You know, normally it takes a huge project management effort as well, um, and uh, especially if you're using manual methods for that. So, um, so how can you find the resources to manage this on an ongoing basis? Yeah, I've, I've certainly heard that that point about functional resources and then their reluctance to get involved being being a challenge in some organisations. Um, so. If we just take a look at the next slide, then we've got a, a kind of a, uh, an image that summarizes some of the things you talked about. Um, before we just move on to talk uh, about robotic test automation and what that can do in regard to those challenges we've just talked about, um, just explain to us what we've got on the screen here is that summary of the kind of traditional testing situation. Yeah, I'd like to use this, this uh, slide to basically illustrate in terms of uh, manual testing and then if you get into script-based test automation in terms of, you know, 
how long it takes to actually get to the level of coverage that it may provide. So manual testing, uh, you know, look, we all start off in doing it. Um, and so therefore, fairly quickly, you can get coverage for it because you're just going in and you're just performing the transactions in a QA system. Um, but at some point, you just can't go any have any more coverage because there's not enough time in the day and you've got, you're using all your resources uh, to be able to do that kind of testing. Then the next evolution of this is like, okay, let's use an automation tool. So let's use something uh, that will, you know, script-based test automation. Um, so we can write it once and reuse it over and over again. That takes longer time to be able to go through it and get that level of coverage. You have to learn how to use the tool, develop the strategies for it, make sure you have reusable test data um, so you can run the scripts over and over again. And so what we actually see is there's a critical mass in terms of how much coverage you can get because you spend a lot of time to build, write those scripts, but you have to maintain them um, because the, you know, your test data may go stale um, or your application changes, and so therefore you have to go through and update the scripts. We actually see that coverage actually tails off over time um, for a number of reasons. One of them is, is that maybe the resources you hired to actually perform this, uh, build these tests and maintain them, maybe they left the company. Um, maybe that the sponsorship for that automation tool um, has left the company or moved on within the company. And so therefore there's no one there to, you know, maintain the sponsorship for it. And so it's, it's something that is a, a big problem for big companies who place a big bet on UI automation. Okay. So we've looked at some, we've looked at the big challenges there and the, the kind of limitations of, of this more traditional approach. Um, let's look at robotic test automation as a solution. So, um, you know, the next slide uh, is one that was uh, introduced earlier um, where we talked about robotic test automation, letting you turn back time. Um, before we move on to the detail, just remind us why you, uh, why you describe RTA in this way. Well, essentially what I want to be able to do, I want to leverage the, the biggest resource we have in our organization, which is our production system and actually all the users who use it and all the the various batch jobs and the connectivity has other systems, the way our business actually works. I want to leverage that in a way to, to perform automation automatically. Okay. So therefore I want to go and take a segment of time in our business, our production business, and use that as a reusable resource for regression testing. Okay, and that's and that's what RTA can do, and that's what we're going to talk about in a second. But before we do, just I think a very important um, point to clarify, because we're talking about the technology quite a lot here, um, but the actual product that that technology is implemented in, which you can see on Basic Technologies website, is called Testimony. Um, and robotic test automation is the technology behind Testimony. So. Uh, just give us the high-level uh, overview of, of what testimony is as a product before we just take that click down into what the technology itself can do. Yeah, so testimony, um, essentially it will automatically play back the test scripts. So therefore, you don't have to have to do manual testing anymore. But more importantly, we're automatically going to write the test scripts by observing a period of time in your production system and every single business process that happens. And through there, we're automatically gonna write the scripts for you. So you no longer have to write test scripts, you no longer have to maintain them. Um, so therefore, it makes it very fast for you to be able to have a large regression test library. And because we're actually observing actual business usage and all the variations and all the crazy edge cases that happen, because if they do happen into your production system, you have very high coverage for regression testing. Okay, so and we're not going to get uh, too much into the, the product itself here. If anyone's interested in that, of course, they can find more information on our website uh, and various materials. So let's, uh, as we've clicked on here, let's talk about robotic test automation, the technology that powers testimony. Explain to us, we've got a quite detailed diagram uh, on the screen here. We're not going to dig into all the nuts and bolts of, about how this works. Um, but just explain to us in concept how RTA works and how it's different from traditional test solutions. You've alluded to it already, but uh, yeah. explain what we can see. Yeah, Pete. So what I'm what testimony does is is that it will once you turn on a recording, we'll say it's like six a.m. for a regular Tuesday, and testimony then is observing every single transaction that comes into your production system, every single transaction, 
and all your, your dialogue transactions, all the communications coming in from external systems, whether they're RFCs or web services, all the batch jobs, right? So we know about the ins and outs of every single transaction. And then in another uh, system uh, with this disposal production copy, then you apply whatever changes you want to test. Could be your, you know, uh, regular release you have, or it could be a set of uh, you know, support packs to come out, or maybe it's an upgrade. Okay, and then in that SAP system, the disposal production copy testimony will tell that system to go back in time, reset its clock back, and play back that period that that Tuesday we did the recording, and play back everything, play back the entire period of business, all the user transactions, all the the communications coming into that system, and uh, the batch jobs, and then testimony what will, will tell you what was different okay so so fundamentally rather than having a kind of set of idealized however large um, scripts or you know pre-written procedures that people are are just running stepping through in a, in a test system we're actually replicating real end user behavior that's been captured in a production system that's right we're leveraging your greatest resource which is your production system and your entire business for regression testing. Okay, so I think, I mean, uh, hopefully that's clear to everybody at a kind of conceptual level of, of what robotic test automation is. And obviously we can get into more details if anybody's interested in that, you know, do please get in touch after the webinar. We're not gonna dig too much into the technical stuff today, um, but let's move on and look at how robotic test automation can can address those kind of challenges that we've already talked about in terms of SAP regression testing. I'm sure people have already um, got ideas in mind about how that's going to solve for what we talked about, but we'll just go through and, and uh, cover those fairly explicitly. So let's look at coverage, first of all. Um, we had this problem of we didn't know what to test. It's a massive effort to find out. We've got to worry about covering things that aren't the happy path. Um, how, is test how is testimony in RTA? helping us with this coverage problem? Well, essentially, because we're actually recording real usage um, and in and a, and a very large breadth of it uh, in any given you know, regular uh, business activity. So I talk about that recording of uh, you know, all day Tuesday, right? Um, when you do that, typically what we find is that uh, we've got like 80% coverage just with one single recording of where your business process work. It could be even higher than that, right? Um, and so therefore, now you're actually breaking out of that step function. You're going into the next level and you're doubling, if not tripling, your capacity that you have or your coverage for uh, the way your business processes actually work with sing one single recording. If you need to have something else you know, covered, you know, maybe it's like month in activity, we'll do a recording of that as well, right? Um, and now you're actually going through and you're getting to really high levels of coverage. Uh, and uh, it, the neat thing about this is that you don't have to maintain the scripts that are in there, okay? We have tools within the, the product that will tell you, um, based upon a recording, what are the coverage levels based upon the way your business processes actually work today. So therefore, you know, if you've uh, done a recording last quarter, it's reusable across a number of releases. At some point, the new functionality that's coming in, well, you want to capture that? Great. Then do a new recording um, and capture that new functionality as well, and then dispose of the old one. So there's really an amount of maintenance burden from there and you're getting very high coverage automatically. Okay, so really um, quite a different situation in terms of how you get up and running and have confidence in what it is you're actually testing, you know, compared with the real usage in your business of your SAP systems. Um, let's talk about test scripts and, and also test data. Um, I, I imagine this is, probably uh, fairly clear to a lot of our listeners already in terms of how testimony is going to help here. But um, just reiterate for us, you know, we, we have this challenge around test script creation in order to get up and running at a sensible level of coverage um, in a traditional way. And also that maintenance issue you talked about. Um, uh, how is RTA getting us away from that problem? Well, essentially, the top set of arrows, you know, I'm sure that everyone in the audience has been through this whole phase of, you know, how do we go identify the business requirements? You know, who do we have to talk to and, and meet with? Um, and then at that point, you're then defining the scope of the automation. I talked about, you know, whiteboard with those post-it notes um, and ch choosing their critical transactions. And then you have to actually go 
write the test scripts and make sure they're reusable, set up the test data, perform the test execution, and then maintain it. So we all know about what the level of effort is in each one of those steps, right? What we're saying with testimony is, is that we're drastically going to change the way you do test automation. So we're automatically going to discover the business processes just by observing every single transaction in a period of time. Through there, we're automatically going to write the test scripts through that learning capability. And of course, from the, a playback perspective, we're automatically going to validate the changes you're making for you. So it just it completely changes the way that you would think about regression testing in SAP. It just gives you a tremendous amount of time savings. And you've already mentioned it, you know, talking about coverage, but in terms of test script maintenance, essentially that's no longer a burden. As you say, we can just do a new recording, right? That's right. They're very, they're disposable. Just do a new recording and then chuck the old one. So it's, uh, it's kind of a radical idea, this, uh, this idea that uh, your test pack costs you very little to create and therefore becomes disposable and can be easily updated with a new version. But that's, you know, what RTA is going to, let users do um, in an SAP environment. So finally then let's look at, let's look at this challenge of scale. Um, we looked at a couple of specific issues that combine with these other problems to make scaling of testing a challenge. What makes testimony a, a more scalable solution? Is there anything apart from that idea of disposable test pack? Well, it, it is. I mean, essentially, uh, you know, your business in terms of the way it behaves today is not necessarily the way it's gonna behave tomorrow. Um, and so therefore, you're, you shouldn't be a burden in your test script library. So if, if you actually have more demand coming in, well, at that point, do another recording or, you know, more demand in your system, just do another recording. It doesn't matter how much you actually have um, in terms of the number of transactions, number of users and those kinds of things. Um, it, just record all of it and play it all back. Um, and, uh, and so therefore, now you're actually keeping up with the coverage based upon the way your business actually works. So you know, no more need to add more people to step up to the next level, right? Um, and I touched on, you know, expanding coverage does not really increase the maintenance or you know, execution overhead. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to ensure that your, your test library is always current uh, because uh, it's just very easy to go through and do a recording. Um, and one of the great benefits about this that I talked to a lot of uh, customers about is, is that it just liberates my functional teams. They can actually, you know, they don't have to be brought in, you know, uh, so earlier on in the actual uh, testing process to go test something uh, and make sure that something works. So therefore they can focus on doing the jobs that actually makes money for the business. Um, and, uh, you know, if they want to, at some point in time in the UAT environment, great. Right, come in and do the testing to ensure that the things work. But uh, by that point, you know, you've probably already gone through a regression test, everything with testimony before you get there. So it, it just it minimizes the involvement of your functional teams. And another thing this, that I didn't touch on earlier, but it's essentially, this will freeze you up to be able to do parallel development. Uh, maybe you have a really big release, um, but you have separate different uh, functionalities. Um, now you can have parallel development paths uh, in, your, in parallel development environments. And so therefore, you know, frees you up to be able to do the regression testing only for one certain par portion of that development. Um, and uh, so that way it's not impacting the, the timelines for the other one as well. So uh, just gives you more flexibility in terms of when you actually do that regression testing. Okay, great, thanks Aaron. I mean, I, I'm sure that's given people a lot of ideas about how robotic test automation can help. It's really quite a, a paradigm shift. and. Um, it kind of almost makes a large chunk of those three challenges we presented at the start almost redundant because they're not relevant to the way that RTA works. So um, before we wrap up today's session, let's just have a quick run through the final part of the presentation that I mentioned we're going to look at, which is shifting quality left. And this idea of, of, of shift left um, is, a, is a very core concept in, in the world of DevOps, for example. Um, if we just move on to the next slide, um, talk to us a bit about what shift left means in terms of in terms of quality well you know i'm sure a lot of people in the audience know about this um but it's essentially we want to be able to do um the broad uh, majority of our uh, testing regression testing earlier on in the development cycle so typical you know waterfall projects um 
you may not do your actual deep regression testing until late in the, the, the project in a user acceptance test environment. Um, and so one of the biggest reasons is because your code has to be ready um, and it actually has to be you know, pretty much workable, uh, hopefully, before you bring in those large set of resources for doing that user acceptance testing, right? Um, and as well as your environment to test in has to be set up. Um, if your SAP system is talking to a lot of other external systems, you have to make sure that those connections are set up in a QA environment. Um, and it, it's almost like the stars have to align just right. And there's a lot of pressure on the on your project management office to coordinate all this activity. Um, and in uh, your best possible outcome is that no one finds any errors. Well, that never really happens because there are errors. And then if there are, if they're really painful, then at that point, it pushes out the project timeline. So the, the goal here is like, hey, how can we do that large regression testing earlier on? Uh, because if we find the problems early, then they're much cheaper to go and remediate um, versus if you push them later on, um, it, it, the cost just goes up significantly because you have to bring the testing resources to test it again, set up the, the test data environment, so on and so on. So the goal here is, is that how can we then leverage automation to be able to do this large regression testing early on? Um, a lot of times I talk to people who are trying to get into DevOps, um, and uh, the goal here is, is that as developers, I want to be able to have fast feedback in terms of when the actual, uh, if my, pro my problem is actually going to be solved, um, as well as I want to be able to identify risk within this early on. So therefore, I'm going to leverage automation to, to actually do this for me. Um, so therefore, I know if there's a problem before I have to bring in large set of resources from for the organization um, to get their input on it. So we're all about uh, accelerating projects so that we don't have a big blocker at the end. Um, but I know we're also, we also have a big cost element here. You've mentioned it there, but um, you know, there are a number of studies which emphasize the, um, the much higher cost of addressing quality problems towards the right hand side of this graph and the left hand side. So I guess that's really a core of what shift left is going to help with as well. That's right. That's right. And so if I if if, it, uh, if I can do the regression testing um, without impact bringing many other resources and identify the problems or validate my uh, my code actually works, um, then at that point it is much cheaper than actually bringing in a large set of resources from the rest of the team. Because I want to deliver clean code when actually they actually come to test it. Okay, so um, just before we wrap up, let's take a, a quick high-level look at a couple of steps that, um, that can help us with this idea of shift left that um, basis technologies can enable. And the first of them is, as you've mentioned there, shifting testing left with robotic test automation. Now, uh, just explain to us how this becomes more of a possibility with the concept that testimony employs um, as opposed to your more traditional ways of testing where this, this can be challenging. Yeah, so essentially we're developing our, our changes in a dev environment. Um, and then once I go through do my cursory you know, unit testing, then why not go through and have them play them back in a testimony playback environment um, and to validate uh, that my code actually works. Um, and so therefore, if we can do this much earlier in the life cycle, again, we don't have to have resources from the rest of the organization come in and do this QA testing. My goal as a developer is, is that I want to deliver, you know, clean code that actually works, that it has fully been regression tested before we hand it off for UAT, um, for example, and go into a pre-prod system. Uh, I want to be able to have the freedom to be able to uh, know it's okay to fail, but I want to be able to identify that, the, that I failed early on, you know, fail fast, fail early, you know, that's okay. Um, and I don't want to actually have to go through and have others tell me that I've actually failed. I want automation to do that. Um, and so therefore it allows us to um, be a little more uh, aggressive in terms of the number of changes we want to make or, or, or what we're trying to achieve. Um, as well as I want to identify risk of you know, how, how, you know, how painful is this change going to be? I can remember uh, working at a, a chemical company who took seven years to go live on an ERP system, and they had a labeled order, fill to order uh, type process that took literally two years for the functional resources to test, to be able to say, yes, this actually works. Then after go live a year later, 
the China, uh, the China plant wanted to go live onto the system, but they want to make a change to that uh, label to order, fill to order process. And the U.S. group said, no, we're not going to allow you to make that change because we don't want to go through that level of testing again. But what if we could leverage automation to be able to play back those uh, U.S. processes, uh, the label order, fill to order automatically, and to be able to give that business a level of confidence that those changes are not going to adversely affect the way they do business. So it, 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 there's a lot of benefits in terms of using automation through robotic test automation earlier on in your development lifecycle before things get into a full-blown QA perspective. Okay, great. Um, so that's obviously how RTA can help. But just a final thing, and as we talk about this concept of shift left, um, there are other things we can do to reduce the burden of testing. Um, especially in terms of you know really unnecessary defects and things that maybe QA shouldn't be looking at. And we can see the logo on the screen here of, uh, of Active Control, which is another product from our DevOps and test automation platform. And that's our uh, change control and transport management solution for DevOps. Um, but it can play a part here in accelerating um, test, uh, regression testing and shifting quality left. So just tell us how Active Control can help with that part of the process as well. Yeah, essentially what it does is that it will automatically move your changes, your transports from your dev to QA to pre-prod and into production for you. Um, but as well as it's always looking out to make sure that you don't have technical errors. Uh, so there's things that just happen, uh, errors that can come occur because of moving transports around. They're just inherent with SAP release. So managing dependencies, um, ensuring that a set of changes that you've tested effectively in your QA environment, uh, when they move in a product, they don't blow up because there's missing a dependency that was not in product. Uh, things like that. So automatic sequencing your transport so you don't have overtakes and you know overwrites and um, you know automating security checks and these kinds of things. So I I, I talk about this and there's ty two types of changes or errors that you have within your uh, SAP environments. You have your functional errors um, that uh, testimony is fantastic for for catching, but as well as you have these technical errors. Um, and I also relate to them as like unforced errors like you have in tennis. Let's go clean those up. Um, so therefore, no one has to know about them and your end user is doing UAT testing. Um, and another thing here that allows is, is that you can now have parallel development. So maybe you're working on these bigger changes and, uh, you know, their own dev systems, right? And their own paths to the production run. And so the active control allows for the automatic retrofit of those changes when they get out of the dev system and, and retrofit that change across the other parallel paths. And it does it for you automatically. Okay, so really, as I say, about reducing the burden of testing there so that we're more able to, to shift left and test earlier and keep our business safe. On which note, just to wrap up, let's look at some outcomes of, uh, of testimony in RTA in particular. There's this new way of testing and this new paradigm for aggression testing. So fundamentally, what we're going to be able to do is reduce risk, even compared to maybe a reasonable level of coverage with today's test automation solutions, because we're going to be able to test much more with much less effort and at a much deeper level beyond the UI than we otherwise can manage. We're going to be able to innovate faster because we're taking manual effort out of that process and we're taking delay away from when we can actually uh, execute our testing. And we're going to be able to increase the productivity of our teams um, because we can scale testing to the needs of our business, with, you know, particularly without throwing more bodies at it. And we're going to free up those functional staff, a really important point to focus on the value adding work that, that they're really employed to do um, and it's just going to generate benefit for the business. So um, some really key reasons why testimony and RTA are uh, a really interesting new way to go for regression testing. So uh, to just wrap up and summarize before we finish, as I said, RTA is a completely new concept and we, with it we can address those three biggest challenges of uh, SOP regression testing that we've looked at and the very key bit there is we no longer with RTA have a need for test scripts or test data management and that's going to take a huge amount of effort out of um, test management and execution and enable us to keep our business safer. So thanks very much to everybody for joining us today. Um, 
we're just slightly over time, but we do, we can have time for a, a couple of questions uh, just to round off the session because we've had a couple come in. Um, before we do that, if you are interested in any further information, of course, you can get in touch with us via our website. You can also request a free demo there. And Erin's uh, email address is on the screen here if you'd like to contact him directly with any particular questions. As I've mentioned, we're recording this session and the link will come out to you via email in the next day or two if you want to go back to any of this uh, material that we've covered today. So just before we finish, uh, just let's take a look at a couple of questions that have come in here. Um, so uh, first one, Aaron, how does RTA compare to risk-based testing? Or I guess the approach you would take using RTA, how does that compare to risk-based testing? Yeah, so essentially, Risk-based testing is about focusing on uh, this particular change. We believe it only affects this area. So, um, and it's and it's a good strategy to use if you essentially have a very broad test scripts that um, you just don't want to go through and run all of them. And so, therefore, you only run a few. The, the biggest thing here is is that, um, as I like to say, look, it's not the happy path. Or the identified path that takes down production is the stuff we can't account for. So the approach with regression testing and te with robotic test automation is, is that it's all-encompassing and it really doesn't cost you any difference to be able to run everything versus running you know only a few selected tests. Let's go ahead and run everything because why not? Let's go ensure that we have you know coverage um, and then this changes which really won't affect the way you do business. Okay, thanks. Um, just got a couple more here. Uh, someone has asked, uh, a simple one, is this a cloud-based tool or an on-premise tool or, or both? Just Can you just explain to us how testimony can be installed and used? Yeah, so testimony is installed on-premise. Um, and uh, it, well, let's talk about details in terms of where it would be installed. Uh, if we can uh, schedule a follow-up call for that, because um, it's different for each customer in terms of where they may want to do that. If you're running your SAP uh, in a private cloud, uh, then at that point, of course, testimony be installed up there. Um, but uh, yeah, effectively, it's on on-premise solution. Okay, and uh, one here that I, th I think you did touch on uh, earlier in the session, but worth clarifying: How does this approach deal with processes that rely on time-dependent data, like like month-end? So, how would you manage that with RTA uh, and testimony? Yeah, um, so I did allude to that in terms of you do like a regular Tuesday, okay, we're going to capture what, you know, 80% of the way your business process actually work. But obviously, you know, the month end activity is not really happening at that time. So let's do record another one recording around month end to be able to have that level of coverage for that event. Okay, so we can, and we can just run, we can run those independently when we need to, I guess? Sure can. You sure can. Okay. Um, just a couple of quick ones here before we finish. Can testimony be used on S4 HANA, um, presumably for, for projects like Upgrade? Lots of releases yeah. coming for S4 at the moment. Yeah, so uh, the focus is on ECC and S4 HANA today. Okay, so so we can we can use it on, uh, on S4 there? We can use it on S4, yes. Okay, great. Um, and I think the final one we've got here, um, how are defects and issues identified and communicated when you use testimony? Yeah, so it's a good question. Uh, we have a uh, defect management capability in the reporting side of uh, testimony for each playback. And so therefore, we'll tell you what the differences are. We'd be able to aggregate uh, these differences uh, by module and then by what we call failure type. Um, and so uh, I can certainly show you this on a demo and walk you through the different types of uh, failure types and how you actually go through and see before and after uh, what was changed. Okay, thanks. Uh, and uh, last question that's just come in, do end users have to install anything to use testimony, which I think is a, a good question. Just that's worth a clarifying. Great no, uh, essentially the recording occurs um, all on the server. So your end users actually have no idea recording is happening. Um, when this is done. So we're seeing every transaction um, because we're running on the server. Okay, so I guess from, again, we come back to that scale question. If you want to add, if you want to capture the actions of more people, no need to have to roll out to lots more workstations. 
That's right. And uh, it doesn't matter what type of uh, you know, activity is going on there. You know, we're going to we're going to capture it. And uh, if it's a uh, Black Friday, guess what? We're capturing everything that happens on Black Friday if you're in the retail space. OK, well, that's uh, that's what we've got time for. We're going to have to wrap it up here. Um, if there are any questions uh, we'll have a look through afterwards that we haven't covered, we will uh, try to get back to you offline, as I've mentioned. Do feel free to get in touch with us using the details on the screen or via our website and the recording of this webinar will be with you soon. In the meantime, thanks very much to everybody for joining us. Thanks to Aaron uh, for your contribution today and I hope you